land of Kilforth is a perilous domain, filled with nefarious monsters, mysterious strangers, and treacherous locations. Throughout the land, various factions fee for power, the supposedly noble Order of the Rose, the terrifying Doom God, and the evil overlord Masklar, to name a few. At the heart of Killforce is the Sprawl, a huge city where intrepid heroes begin their journey to fame and fortune. Over the coming month, a deadly gloom will descend upon Killforth through which the heroes must battle to prove their worth, defeat a primordial evil, and save the land from darkness. Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I'm completely honored to have the possibility to play through some actual rounds of Gloom of Killforth, a fantasy quest game designed by Tristan Hall who goes under the synonym Ninja Dog on the Geek and this is also the great guy who is responsible for those awesome danger cards for fortune and glory and I think this is the first time or when I checked out fortune and glory and as I'm really a huge fan of this game, I stumbled upon Tristan basically. And since then I'm following him and then I noticed, hey, this guy is about to publish his own game. And really, if you know what the other cards look like, you will be impressed by this one here as well. So I really reached out to him, basically backed him, please Tristan, let me try out your game. Let me do a video from you. And luckily he really said, yes, go ahead and yeah, make a video. And of course, this is what I'm doing and I want to really support his campaign here with this video, but I also want to let you know that I absolutely love this game. I'm usually not doing this, doing my playthrough or review or preview videos. Normally, I really try not to bring my own opinion into this one, but really I fell in love with this game as soon as I got hold of it, read through the rules, who are absolutely not perfect, but really close to perfection, especially for a pro type game here so really you can get behind all the mechanics relatively easily and it's really a great great game if you know the other videos from my channel i think you have noticed that this was quite an introduction for me but again this is something we're really honored i'm really looking forward to walk you through some actual rounds of this one i really have to mention that even though the artwork looks awesome on those cards. I have to disappoint you somewhat because this is not the final artwork so this is all graphics that will not ship with the game. There are some cards who are more or less final in respect to their artwork but Tristan really engaged very talented people to come let's say or create the final artwork for his game but unfortunately you won't see that that much today in this video here. But again, keep in mind this is not the final artwork and especially the iconography will change on the final cards. I think he shared some of his more final cards on the Geek as well. You might also be able to find something on his Facebook page for Killforth. I think I will put a link into the description of the video. But I think in respect to show you the game, to demonstrate how it feels and how much fun it can be, this is perfectly fine here. And I'm really hoping you will enjoy this playthrough as much as I will. Another cool fact about Gloom of Killforth is you can play it competitively, you can play it cooperatively, and you can also play it completely solo. And it really doesn't matter in which mode you play this game, it's fun after all. We notice that the, let's say, comparative, competitive game, sorry, is not that competitive. Of course, you have your goal and sometimes it can be a bit faster to play it competitively because you only have to face one of those ancient ones and whoever defeats this ancient one wins this game but really apart from that you're not really fighting against each other there are some cards where you can send let's say a foe towards another competitor or stuff like that but it's not that competitive when you compare it for example to talisman or, or runebound 
Today I will play this game in a solo mode because it really plays much faster and much smoother and again you're not really missing anything. There are some team tactics which you can do in the competitive in the cooperative game and this is something you have to do especially when it comes to defeating the ancient swan or to try to level up another of the heroes because before you can face your ancient one you have to first complete your personal saga so each of those heroes will have their private or personal saga which they have to complete before they are will able to yeah, engage the ancient one and I guess I will also play it a little bit differently so I will more or less explain you all the rules while I play as usual and then I will have some kind of a final thoughts at the end of the game because this video will hopefully help Tristan to realize his project or his game here but fear not I will definitely keep on playing at least some rounds I'm not sure if I will let's say play through a complete session of gloom of kill force because I have already some requests to play it actually so I might really need the components maybe I'm quick enough to play through this game we will see I will definitely walk you through a considerable amount of rounds here at least I think three four videos or something like that which should really help you to get behind the game mechanics and really join me on my quest to defeat the ancient one here in this game you can choose out of four different races and all of those races come in two genders basically so for example you have the dwarf female and on the back side you will find the dwarf male i believe both sides are more or less the same and of course some of those attributes will differ from race to race and some of those do have a special ability which is not the case for the human male here but this goes back because of his otherwise somewhat higher special ability but for example you see here the elf male who is agile when breaking camp ends at a forest location he gains one action point okay i will shuffle those cards and i will take one card from the top so really i don't know what i will get and here we have the demon male and those are his stats basically so you have a fighting value of three a study value of three the sneak value is not entirely good that's only a one and this says what's the official word for that that's the influence sorry my bad the health and his starting money and his special ability says heretic add plus two to your tested attribute value in each test against a demon this can be definitely helpful especially when checking out some of those mountain locations and here we have some nice flavor tags not all of veil vale heritage are intent upon the destruction of the civilized races on top of your race you're also going to choose or randomly select a class and here we have the wizard the warrior the rogue or the priest for once they give you a special boost for one attribute for example the warrior would give you two extra dice when fighting that's pretty clear and all of those classes have their special classes stack so for example the warrior has the martial skills here and there are two cards for each of the level of a hero a level always starts at level zero and as soon as you're going to more or less complete one stage of your saga you will be allowed to pick one of those two skills and so for example this one would say the hunter veil at a plains location and then i would be allowed to heal veil is nothing less but just tap your card so those are cards that you are about to use once during your turn but again there are also the cards for the priest for the rogue or for the wizard each of them has their own set of skill cards okie dokie let's see which class we are about to get so let's just take the top one and i'm the warrior can you believe that this was really totally random 
So my demon male is now a warrior with a fighting power of five. That's definitely not too bad. There are a lot of fights in this game. Not really that sneaky kind of guy, so I will not be able to escape some of those fights. But I think with a fighting value of five, that shouldn't be that big of a deal. So I will take now my classes skill deck. So let us check out what we have. So for example, one level one skill would be the hunter we already know that and the other one would be the prize fighter after you roll dice during a fight test re-roll each die showing less than three and that's definitely a very very cool skill which i think i will go for as soon as i have completed my first chapter of my personal saga which says for the warrior take fortress you can also mix and match them but this is really something that the rules recommend if you play the warrior class use this saga here especially when you are kind of new so i will stick to that and what do they say here evil forces have been gathering in a forbidding stronghold from which they attack the surrounding settlements pressing the locals for information you discover that the location of this lair is in the unending jungle Innocent people are being plagued by the gathering evil from within the confines of the forest and you must enlist their help. In order to complete this chapter I have to more or less either discard or have that in my personal display cards with the appropriate keywords here. So for example, I would be able to discard a mountain card which I would have on my hand in order to fulfill one third of this saga chapter here, then the planes card. And as I'm playing alone, I also have to get rid of an enemy card here as well but i think i will explain that to you a little bit more in depth in a not a later episode but in a later point in time each of those sagas consists of four chapters so we have on the back side chapter two then there is chapter three chapter four and then you will have to face let's say some final engagement the saga finale here which says storm the keep and this is in my case a fighting encounter which i have to defeat so i have to roll six successes in order to take the fortress and if i'm able to do that during my turn then i can flip this to the other side and then i'm getting this totem here the stronghold and this totem gives me plus three additional dice and as soon as this enters place i'm allowed to draw two items and put them into play as assets which is definitely great but i could also consider to just sell this totem for 12 gold this is relatively important when you play this game competitively because you can also kind of win this game even though if you're not able to defeat it the ancient one because there's also a timer which is the night deck here and the timer consists or this night deck consists of 25 cards and it's if you're not able to defeat the ancient one by let's say the end of the 25th day basically so before the last night card will be resolved then you normally lose the game especially when you play solo or in the co-op mode but if you play it competitively you still score your gold for example and then whoever has the most amount of gold in their pockets will be some kind of a winner it's a weak victory but at least some kind of a victory i have placed my miniature on sprawl city card here and keep in mind these ninjas are not part of the game I believe I stole them from Middle Earth Quest. Yeah, that's right. But I think they completely fit to the theme here. I really like that. I also like the game a lot, Middle Earth Quest as well. And so I think this is a pretty good representation of my demon male warrior. And also keep in mind that the game board consists of these 25 different cards and those cards represent the lands of kill force basically they are also double sided but i explain that to you in a second or when i come to the end of my first round and as you might be able to imagine that this is really a random setup so the replayability in respect to the game board is really immense 
with 25 different cards. One thing, Sprawl City will always be at the center of the game board, but everything else might be at a completely different location the next time you actually play the game. Let's finish the game setup. So I will start with one gold. I will start with four health tokens. I will have four of those fate tokens. I hope that is right. And I also start with four of those action tokens. And this is basically a one-on-one -on -one match with my current health here. So I will be able to do four actions during my turn. There's one last thing to do, and that is to choose or to draw one card of one of those reward decks. So we have a title, a spell, an item or an ally. As I am a warrior, I think I will go with an item here. And right now this card goes to my hands. And keep in mind that all the cards I have on my hand are only rumors of a card. So I heard a rumor that there is a Rosen Chainmail next at the Spire Tour here, which would then be able to give me some special rewards. In this case, for example, enter play, place four health points on this card when you would lose one or more health points. You may discard one health on this card to prevent one of that HP loss. So this is pretty good armor basic, but right now it's really only a rumor which I will be able to find during my game. There's also a hand size limit and this goes for all of the components basically. So you have can have up to six cards on your hand, up to six cards in your asset and six of those loot tokens, but most of them will be triggered more or less instantaneous as soon as you get them. So you get some additional gold or sometimes it's a trap. Sometimes it says nothing, but sometimes you get some very valuable potions. And last but not least, I have to draw an ancient enemy, which I have to fight in order to win this game. And here we have the Marquis of Pain, who is a demon, which is a good thing. And he starts the game with 12 health points and throws five fighting dice, which is quite a lot. And most of those ancient ones also have some special battle rules. So this is, for example, a trap. So each time I engage in a battle, I have to sacrifice one item. This is definitely not a good thing. And the Marquis of Pain gets one, plus one maximum health points for each enemy and each enemy token in play. So this is really something where I want to keep control over those creatures on the board. And when a battle round starts, each hero loses one health point. This is really a tough one. And HP damage stays on the Marquis of Pain after battle. That's basically the same for all of those ancients. And during the night phase, when a mountain location falls into gloom, place one random plot token on it. And Marquis of Pain heals one HP during each night. But that's also the same for all of the ancient ones. And now we are finally good to go. Sorry for the long introduction here, but really some of those stuff need to be explained. I really wanted to show you some of the components, even though they are prototype and not official, but I really wanted to make sure that you see most of the stuff that ships with the game. It's far from being all because there are still those location decks for the plains, for the forest, for the badland or for the mountains here. So a lot of cards in this game. There is also the plot deck which normally will be placed during the night phase. So really a lot of components. But again, I will now really start playing this game and I start here at Sprawl City. It says on the card, heroes begin the game at Sprawl Cities and hero may perform trade actions here. This is a way in order to buy some actual items, spells, titles or allies in the city. But of course, you need to be able to afford those. During your turn, you can move, you can clear, you can search, you can hide, you can confront, you can rest, you can discover, you can do a market action or a regal action. So really a lot of stuff to do. And there are also some of the, let's say, call it a free action kind of, but basically this is what you are about to do. For each of those actions, you have to get rid of one of your 
action points and as soon as you're out of action points you have to take camp and basically conclude your turn you can also call it a day much sooner so if you really don't want to move ahead you can still do that you can leave some action points behind but of course they will not follow you to the next round so whatever you haven't used in your current round won't help you doing your next round and as I have this spire or this Rosen chainmail cut here, and I know that the Rosen chainmail chain mail can be found at the spire tour, which is luckily not that far from my current location, so only two spaces away. I think this will be my first direction. It's always cool to go after those items and stuff like that especially when you start the game but of course i also should not forget that i need mountain planes and enemy cards in order to progress my chapter of this saga here mountain is good because those i do find at those locations here so those are mountain locations you see them at those icons and here also the background color really helps you where to find those special keyword cards here so a mountain can be found at the mountain range but also enemies will be most likely in a mountain space whereas this plains keyword here will most likely be here at one of those planes Okay, let's spend our first action point in order to move to the Lonely George here. And as soon as you enter a location without an encounter, the first thing you will do, you will draw an encounter card from the appropriate deck. And again, there's a deck for each of those special environments. So I will draw a mountain card, which I will place here onto my current location and in this case we have found an enemy and an enemy is a special rule basically so all the enemies you have to defeat before you can take any additional actions here but it's pretty cool for once this devil has a mountain keyword it also has an enemy keyword so it really can help me to drive ahead my saga chapter here but unfortunately i only can play a card for one keyword so i cannot use this one single card to satisfy both of those keywords here so i have to keep on looking but this is definitely a pretty good starting point it's also a demon and here my special race ability comes into the picture at plus two to your tested attribute value in each test against a demon which is kind of cool so i'm allowed to roll seven dice against this devil here so three from my race card plus two from my class card and then plus two because of my race ability the devil rolls four fighting dice it can bring me one piece of gold if i sell this card but i will explain that to you later i would can decide to sneak away but i should have hidden before i do that so this is not possible anymore but this is really something i won't be doing here it also says it has a trap and this trap says i have to sacrifice one title luckily i don't have a title in my asset pool so this trap doesn't do me any bad at this point in time okay let's roll some actual dice i have to beat him four times so i have to do five or uh, four wounds in order to defeat the devil and so let's just roll our seven dice and each five and six would be a success so basically arkham horror style so in this case i already inflicted three wounds on this poor devil here unfortunately those fights are basically at the same time so he will directly fight back with four of his dice and i'm kind of lucky i only got one wound so i have to get rid of one of my wound tokens here unfortunately whenever you are lose health points in this game you also lose the same amount of 
action points that goes with this health point. So in this game, you really should rest as soon as you can in order to get your action points back. Because now I'm only having two actions left. Before that fight, I did have three uh, and I, the, the fight is still not over. Though I think I really have to take care of the devil right now. After the first fighting round, I can now decide to sneak away, but I think this is not what I will do. I will roll my seven dice again, hoping yeah, that's definitely enough. Unfortunately, he's still allowed to roll some more dice. So this is the fourth wound, so I don't have to give him more than he actually has, but he will now fight back. And here I'm really lucky I haven't suffered another wound. Awesome. Okay, so we can get rid of those tokens here. So this devil is now defeated. And now I can claim my reward. The reward consists of two steps. The first step would be the loot step. So I could now decide whether to directly take one of those gold tokens here that's basically printed on that card or I could decide to draw one of those loot tokens as one gold is really not that much. I'm really tending to grab one of those countless loot tokens here so let's do that so we'll take this one and guess what <laughs> this is also just one gold token but at least we haven't lost anything or have run into a trap or something like that so we will directly cash this in in order to get one gold token the second step is the rumor step so for once i could now decide to either claim this card as a rumor and again this card can help me to fulfill my saga or i could decide to take or trade this card in into the appropriate reward card and for enemies this would be an item card here but again this would be a rumor of an item and i'm really after those keywords in order to complete my saga here so i think i will just trade in this card here which i will also put on my hand next to my Rosen chainmail. Okie dokie, I still have two more actions left, so I will use one more action point to move down here to the Spire Tour. And again, I have to draw an encounter card for the mountains. And here we have the troll. Again, this is an enemy, can also help me big deal in order to complete my saga, which is kind of nice. When a battle round starts, troll heals 1 HP. This is really not nice. He only rolls 3 dice. I roll 5 dice now, so I can no longer use my special ability because this is definitely not a demon and whatever I do I have to fight this troll anyway so let's do that so I will roll five dice here so let's see how good or bad we will do these are two wounds not entirely great he will roll three dice and I could really lose some action points here this time I was definitely lucky so I didn't take any wound here so i think i will go into the next battle round but keep in mind at the start of each battle round the troll heals one health point so i really have to inflict three more wounds in the next round oh gosh this was really crap not sure if you can see that so i didn't inflict any wound here wow this is tough but nevertheless he will hit back and there we are we took two additional wounds which means we just lost two of them and we lost the remaining action points wow this was really crap so i think i will go for the escape auction so i checked that my hero was not defeated he was clearly not he still has one more health point so i can take now the escape option which means I will move back to the location where I came from. I definitely have to 
completely end my turn so I do make camp the hero will or the enemy will heal anyway so all the normal enemies heal to their full health when I'm not able to defeat them and this already ends my very first turn in kill force which is really crap Let's come to the knight phase. Let's draw our first knight card. And this is the Rosen Crusader. It's a noble, a stranger, a knight and a male, though these are the keywords. Place this stranger at Grand Plains. And one additional thing would happen to Grand Plains, which is printed here. The Grand Plains will fall into Kloom, which means we will flip this card. It's now definitely colorless what you would see here and if I ever have to face the knight here I would lose an additional health points and this will happen to most or all of those locations throughout the game so kill force will get more dangerous or perilous by each knight but I still have to place this stranger here. A stranger is per se not an enemy which is a good thing. I can decide to make him my enemy then I will be able to fight him but I can also try to influence this Rosen Crusader here and this is something like an encounter and then I would be able to get my rewards just like defeating the animal. This really goes back to where you are best at in respect to your address but for now this stranger will stay here on this grand plains let's start the next round and i only get though many action points like i currently have health tokens so i will start the next round with only one health or action point and action point and this is really crap this sucks uh yeah i think with my only action which i'm about to take right now i will just rest which will give me one health point back so i will start my next round with two action points and this is definitely way better than only one but this already concludes my turn basically so let's draw the next night card and here we have the rosen pilgrimage this is a quest which is kind of good i guess and open heath will also fall into gloom which is definitely not a good thing and we will play the quest here as well i think this is might be something I will take out later on because I need a planes card anyway. The problem is as long as there is an active encounter I will not be able to go for another encounter and this night encounter is definitely not the right kind of keyword or it does not have the right keyword it has quest seek and knight and I am clearly looking for the planes keyword here so i really have to get rid of that quest in order to search a new encounter but of course there are plenty of other planes location here in kill force which i can go to before i have to chase this one here let's do one more round i will start the next round with two action points and i think the first thing that i will do again is will i will rest so i get one health Point back so the next round I will start with three and I guess with the last one I will move up north to the dark mire and the dark mire says heroes may spend one move action here to move directly to old wood so they have this cool little shortcuts unfortunately the old woods is just here but at least it would save me one movement action if I ever want to go there because you are normally only allowed to move orthogonally through kill force here. As there is no encounter here at Dark Maya, I have to draw one from the appropriate deck and this says captured Badlands and this is an event. Event is something that will be triggered immediately 
plays on the weakest hero. Unfortunately, I am the weakest hero because I am all alone. And the weakest hero is normally the guy who is the least amount of skill cards in his hand. So in this case, that's simply me. Weakest hero performs a sneak three test. Pass, gain one ally. The problem is I can only roll one die and then I would look for a five and a six, but I would need to roll three successes and that's kind of difficult with only one die. If I would be able to roll two dice, there would still be hope because I can trade in one of my fate tokens to transform this into an automatic success here. I can do that once per day, the complete day I can do that. For once I can use those fate tokens and once those fate tokens are gone, I can still do the same with my rumor cards, which I would be allowed to discard and then they serve the same purpose as those fate tokens. But again, this will never be enough, so I will just discard this Badlands card here. This is really a pity because it would give me one ally and this is definitely a good thing. But in this case, yeah, I'm not allowed to do that. Okay, end of day three already. Let's draw our next Knight's card. And here we have the Howling Gale, which is a weather cards. And weather cards stay in play or will be replaced by new weather cards when they come into the game. And this says place one obstacle at each location for each stranger it has. When a stranger enters play, place an obstacle at its location. So this is really something which is not pretty good. And of course, the old wood will fall into gloom as well but still i'm allowed to use the shortcut here right now we only have one stranger in play oh, yeah that's the case so we will only place an obstacle marker here at the grand plains and what those obstacle markers do you have to basically get rid of them before you are allowed to interact with that spot here so i would not be able to try to influence this stranger here before i got rid of this influence uh, obstacle token here so this is really makes life a little bit difficult and just lets you burn some of your valuable action tokens i think i will end my playthrough for today i've played through three complete days or days and night phases which will hopefully give you an idea about how this game how it works but this was really only the tip of the iceberg here there's so much other cool fancy stuff that you might be able to find out in this game so please follow me through my journey through kill force here and really try to regain my health and really take out this troll as soon as possible again this project will be active on kickstarter i don't have an exact date here maybe as i'm talking this is already live i don't know please check out the campaign you will definitely find a link to the campaign in the description of this video again tristan is such a cool guy and he's really committed to this game and i played this game quite some time or quite often and really can say i totally enjoyed every time i play it i really hope to see you soon in my next episode of this playthrough of gloom of kill force a fantasy quest game and yeah until then bye bye <laughs>